good afternoon girls so today i will talk on the white rust disease of crucifers okay so this is another common disease of several cruciferous crops so today i will discuss on this white rust so coming to the introduction now what is a white rust disease white rust disease is a common disease of several cruciferous crops okay like mustard cabbage turnip radish and other cruciferous crops found everywhere in india so this white rust disease it is also found in other cruciferous weeds in the weeds also this disease is found in the weeds like capsella bursa pastoris and also nasturtium indicum so these are the two weed crops okay which are infected by this disease so according to saharan et al in the year 1984 he reported that up to about 54.5 percent loss in the yield may take place okay due to the infection of this white rust disease in the especially in the floral infection okay so in the flower so this disease it is worldwide in distribution and it occurs in all those areas where this these cruciferous crops they are cultivated okay both wild as well as cultivated varieties are attacked by the pathogen which cause white rust disease now coming to the host okay the host they can be uh, many like many cruciferous crops i had already mentioned like field mustard okay brassica campestris brassica nigra that is the black mustard raffinus sativus that is radish and many other like turnip and cabbage as well so these are the hosts which is, which are infected by this disease white rust so coming to the symptoms now some in for symptoms we can see that all parts of a plant okay all parts of any plant of any cruciferous plants they can be aff affected by this um they are attacked by the pathogen okay by the pathogen which causes this white rust disease and the infection is both localized and systemic okay localized meaning those infection which affect only a particular uh, organ okay a particular tissue sorry a particular tissue in a plant for example the leaf or the stem or the uh fruits or the flowers so that is the localized infection where a systemic systemic meaning affecting the entire body plant okay affecting the entire plant so the infection here in white rust it can either be localized and systemic now a localized infection it takes place in adult plants only okay and whereas you can find systemic infection that is infection of the whole plant can be observed in only the young ones the young plants can be uh, affected that is the this pathogen it affect the whole body plan in the young ones whereas those adult plan they have the localized infection that means the infection occurs either only in the leaf part or in the root or in the stem or in the flowers so if we talk about the localized infection okay the localized infection that is on the adult plan as you can see here in this figure okay as you can see here in this figure that is the major plan the leaf of a major plan okay so the local infection it appears as white or cream yellow colored pustules okay these are the pustules 
of various shapes and sizes you can see here small very small pustules or and very large okay pustules here so the pustules or the blisters they are of various shapes and size and they commonly appear on the surface of the leaves okay the smaller stems and all as well as on the floral parts so these are the small fluid filled bumps okay which appear on the leaf parts so here the pustules or the blisters okay they are filled with sporangia okay they are filled with the sporangia now the sporangia here they which are present in these blisters they usually measure approximately one to two millimeter in diameter so generally the spots as you can see here in this figure they are developed on the lower surface of the leaf okay they usually develop on the lower surface now in some plants the infected leaves they become thick fleshy and also they become enrolled that is they roll inwards due to the infection the leaves they roll inwards and become thick and fleshy now during severe infection the growth of the leaves and sometimes the entire plant it usually becomes stunted so these as you can see here the cabbage the uh, radish and other plants are cruciferous plants are affected by this pathogen so this is the infection in the floral part okay this is the infection in the floral part and due to severe infection usually the growth of leaves and uh, also sometimes the entire plant itself it becomes stunted now when the young stem and the inflorescence are infected okay the infection now it becomes systemic you can see here the young stems and the inflorescence here you can see the flowers they are covered in these white blisters all over by the white blisters okay so the infection here now it becomes systemic in the tissues and it stimulates hypertrophy and hyperplasia that means hypertrophy and hyperplasia means the enlargement of the organ tissue you can see here the enlargement of the stem the organ tissue okay why because due to the infection there is an increase in size of the cells or and the reproduction rate of the cells so hypertrophy and hyperplasia can be observed that is the enlargement of the organ tissue can be observed when the infection it becomes systemic so as you can see here the young stems when the young stems okay they are infected as well as the inflorescence they are infected the infection now becomes systemic that means it infect the whole body plant the whole part of a plant and the and it stimulates the hypertrophy and the hyperplasia the enlargement of the tissues okay and also there is a varied distortion of these infected organs where we can see the inflorescence okay the inflorescence axis okay the rachis here we can see the rachis they become distorted and thus suppress the growth the development of a flower okay and causes malformation as well as decoloration of the floral parts so uh, girls if you have understand this um, symptoms okay of the disease now let us uh, take a look at the causal organism okay what is the organism which causes this disease now white rust disease is caused by albugo candida again it is a fungal pathogen okay because we know that many fungi as I had uh, mentioned earlier that there are many uh, fungal pathogens okay which cause diseases in plants 
Now, albugo candida is another fungal pathogen. Okay, it, it also it is also known by the name Cystopus candidus. So, this albugo candida it is an obligate parasite. Albugo candida it is an obligate parasite. If you remember, obligate parasites are those which require hosts okay, to complete their life cycle. Meaning that they, that if they uh, they cannot obtain a host, okay, they cannot complete their life cycle without exploiting a suitable host. So it this is this albugo candida is also an obligate parasite, and if we talk about this pathogen, okay, the mycelial part that is the vegetative body or the mycelium it is aseptic now girls this i had explained many times before also between the septation and the aseptic condition of the hyphae the, the mycelium okay so just remember that the mycelial plant body the mycelium of this pathogen is aseptic meaning it has no septation and also it usually grows intercellularly okay it grows in the intercellular spaces within the host epidermis and it usually develops as you can see here in this figure it usually develops round hostorium so girls as you can see here in this figure they form a globular hostoria okay when they grow these mycelium okay when they grow intercellularly you can see here these are the hostoria the globular hostoria which uh, within the adjacent cell okay to draw nutrition from the host cell and you can see here that the, these mycelium they have no septation there is no septation in the mycelium so that means they are aseptic now the mycelium it grows intercellularly and it forms a knob like you can see these one two three here these three they are the uh, knob like hostoria okay they form a knob like hostoria in the host cells and uh, <clears throat> the high fee from the internal mycelium collect on the, the epidermis okay so they collect the they absorb the nutrients okay from the host cell now from this underlying high fee numerous sporangiophores are developed okay so you can see here these are the host tissue you can see host tissue in this figure these are the host tissue these are the hostoria this is the mycelium so from this mycelium what you can see the formation of these what are these? These are the sporangiophores you can see in this figure B. Okay, the enlarged picture of this one. You can see these are the sporangiophores. Now, we know that a network of hyphae, okay, it is referred to as a mycelium, right? That is the vegetative body of the uh, organism of this microbe. So, whereas the sporangiophores, they are the specialized hostoria, uh, sorry, the specialized hyphae, okay, in which the spores, the sporangio, the sporangia are formed. So, you can see it is from these sporangiophores, you can see these sporangia, these sporangi sporangiophores, they bear sporangia. Okay, so these you can see here in this figure B, these are the sporangia and these are the specialized hyphae, okay, referred to as the sporangiophore. So what are the sporangiophore? They are the specialized hyphae bearing the sporangia. Now, what happened here? Okay, as you can see in this figure from since the numerous short sporangiophores they arise okay from the mycelium and they develop like a closely compact you can see here closely compact 
palisade layer okay that is a layer of parallel elongated cells known as palisade layer so they develop a close compact palisade layer under the epidermis and also with further growth okay blisters like areas they develop on the epidermis okay they appear like blisters like I had shown in the first figure on the leaf okay and those blisters they develop on the epidermis they are called sori okay that means when the cluster of sporangia form as you can see here all these sporangia they form on the sporangiophore so when these clusters of sporangia are formed as you can see in the leaf surface they look like white or creamy yellowish blisters okay or white pustules you can see so those are called sori that is a cluster of sporangia are known as sori now the sporangia they develop on these specialized hyphae that is the sporangiophore okay and they are arranged in a basic petal succession as you can see here the sporangia they are arranged in a basic petal succession and also you can see here the small this small part here these which join these sporangia these are nothing but they are the gelatinous pad okay the gelatinous pad develop between a successive sporangia sporangia you can see here one these trees three to four sporangia they are arranged in a betty basic petal succession with these gelatinous pad okay develop between the successive sporangia these they function as disjuncta now what are disjuncta the disjuncta they are small temporary body between the conidia of the between the conidia of some fungi they connect the one spore with the other okay so here these they these gelatinous pad here also they form a connection they form in between a successive sporangia you can see these are the dis disjuncta cells now um so with further growth okay with further growth pressure exerted inside the epidermis when this it forms inside the epidermis they will exert pressure okay i will show the in this figure they will exert pressure okay in inside the epidermis caused by and cause the epidermis to rupture okay then the epidermis will rupture and these sporangia then they will be exposed and as you can see here that some of the disjuncta cells they disappear so these uh, sporangia when they get exposed the disjuncta will disappear so here in this figure you can see that this is the host epidermis all right then many sporangiophores they are arranged in a compact palisade layer okay and also the sporangium you can see these round round structures the sporangium they are born on these sporangiophores and when many sporangiophores they form inside they will exert pressure on the hose epidermis and the hose epidermis will rupture it. okay you can see here it has already been ruptured and uh, due to the pressure and these sporangia they are exposed so if we talk about the sporangiophores okay sorry the sporangia okay the single sporangia now the sporangia just remember they are hyaline okay if you uh, see at the these sporangia, sporangia they are glassy and translucent in appearance okay so they are hyaline and more or less spherical not exactly spherical but more or less spherical and they measure about 14 to 16 micrometer into 16 to 20 uh, micrometer and they are usually when they are exposed to the outside environment okay they are usually uh, disseminated by the wind they are spread by the wind 
So these puranja they usually germinate. They usually germinate by zoo spores. Okay, the zoo spores will form. You can see here in this figure I when the, they usually germinate by the formation of the zoo spores and sometimes okay these sporangia they will uh, rarely germinate by producing germ tube okay so sometimes they germinate by by forming germ tube or by the production by the formation of the zoo spores so inside each of these sporangia um, zoospores will form that is during the asexual reproduction of this microbe so the zoospores will form now the zoospores they as you can see here in this figure j you can see these two zoospores here the enlarged picture of these zoospores they are kidney shaped okay that is they are reniform reniform meaning they are kidney shaped and also by flagellate okay with the flagella laterally inserted in the spores so they are reniform by flagellate with by flagellate meaning two flagella containing two flagella and with laterally inserted flagella so after swimming okay after a period of swimming they will get enclosed or encysted okay they are encysted that means they will be enclosed and then they will start to germinate forming a germ tube. Okay, so they will germinate forming a germ tube. As you can see here, suppose this is the zoospore after it germinate forming this germ tube here. So you can see after formation of the germ tube, they then they will enter the host cell through the stomata. Okay, as you can see here this germ tube it enters through the stomata and causes infection so what happened this is the asexual uh, reproduction of the spore now what happened at the end of the growing season okay of the growing season of these crops cruciferous crops now in that case the this sporangia they will produce ugonia and antheridia and we know that when Ugonia and Antheridia, they will, um, they will fuse to form the U spore. Okay, the Ugonia that is the female, and Antheridia the male. They will form, and they will form from these internal myceliums. Okay, from these internal myceliums itself, the Ugonia and the Antheridia they will fuse. And they will form the oospore. So what you can see here, this is the oogonium. Okay. The oogonium here and the antheridium. You can see this is the oogonium and this is the antheridium. And when they fuse together, they will form the oospores. So just remember, this is the sexual reproduction of this um, albugo candida. Whereas during asexual reproduction, it will produce zoospores so during sexual reproduction it will form the oospore now this uh, sexual reproduction it takes place only when the only at the end of the growing season that is when the condition is not favorable for its growth it will produce it will reproduce through asexual reproduction by forming the zoospores Whereas if the condition is favorable for its growth, then it will form oospore, okay, due to the fusion of the oogonium and the antheridium. So um, these uh, oogonia, okay, these, uh, sorry, the oospores which are formed in the host epidermis now, they are usually globular in structure. They are globular and they are about 40 to 45 micrometer in diameter. And just remember that these oospores or the sexual spores, they will act as a resting spore. Okay, why? Because you will see that during this time, when the condition is not favorable for the growth of albugo candida, then these will act as resting spores. Okay, so 
after a long period of rest then these spores they will germinate again by forming zoo spores okay so when they germinate they will again form the zoo spores which will infect the host that mean uh, after the when the condition is favorable for culturing the next crop during the next crop season so if we take a look at the disease cycle so now i will explain about the disease cycle of this albugo candida so coming to the disease cycle okay the disease cycle you can see here as any other plant pathogen uh, this one also it has a primary cycle as well as a secondary cycle and also it has a dormant phase and an active phase so if you just now i had mentioned about the o spores right and they act as a resting spore because the plant the pathogen okay in this case when after it forms oospore remember the oospore they will form at the end of the growing season okay so at the end of the growing season of any crop which it infects so just at the end of the growing season they develop the oospore okay which form from the fusion of the male and the female that is the antheridia and the ugonia so these pathogen in this case they perennate in the soil okay so in the soil or in plant debris as oospore either in plant debris or in the soil and this will serve as a primary inoculum so we this is the dormant phase where the function of the Okay, of the microorganism is slowed down so during the dormant phase now when the onset okay with the onset of the favorable condition these oospores again they will start germinate okay oospores they will germinate by forming zoospores all right they will form zoospores and they will cause further infection so we see that the we see that the ooze spore okay in favorable condition they will germinate forming the zoo spores which will after germination of zoo spores they will cause infection in the host and they will form mycelium in the intercellular spaces then again these mycelium they can form sporangiophores with sporangia okay then the sporangia they will produce zoospores then again the zoospores will germinate and again cause infection so it this is the secondary cycle where it this can be repeated several times when the zoospores are formed again and again they can spread to other parts of a plant and cause infection so this is the secondary cycle whereas the primary cycle it comes from where from the oospore okay from the perennating mycelium now so that is why here we say that this is the active phase then we know that when the condition is not favorable that is at the end of the growing season then these mycelium instead of forming sporangiophore with sporangia they will form gametangia that is ugonia and antheridia they will form these gametes which when they fuse they will form oospores and these oospores they will not infect any host so they go back to the dormant phase so this is the life the disease cycle sorry not the life cycle the disease cycle of this plant pathogen albugo candida and the infection it progress at a faster rate if temperature it becomes less than 15 degrees centigrade and humidity it becomes more than 65 degrees centigrade especially in the months of december to february this was reported by lakara and saharan in the year 1990 okay in their study they observed that the infection it progress very fast okay at a faster rate 
if the temperature is very low and the humidity is very high as you can see that all those pathogens the disease which we have studied earlier the pathogens they always uh, the disease always progress at a faster rate when the condition is favorable that is when the when the temperature is very low and humidity is very high so same with this albugo candida okay as reported by these people so at the end of growing season these oospores right these oospores they are developed inside the host tissue and they will remain dormant until the next season right they will remain dormant inside the host plant debris okay the plant debris or when they fall in the soil they will remain dormant in the soil as oospores so girls here i just want to show you when the infected plant part okay is cut and if you observe under the microscope okay you can see here these it shows the oospores okay the oospores are okay from the infected plant debris you can see here clearly the oospores and whereas uh, the other one that is here you can see these uh, sporangiophore okay they are arranged like a palisade layer here you can see with the these sporangiophore they bear many sporangia okay you can see these round round structures they are the sporangia and these are the sporangiophores and uh, here also you can see many sporangiophores and uh, sorry sporangia and these are the sporangiophores you can see here these elongated cells these are the sporangiophores